I was about to I was about to forget to record. Okay. So for people so for, of those ones who will be watching online, we have three types of loop. That is a do while loop, do until loop, and for loop. These are types of loop that we'll be looking at. So I'm going to look at the first one. That is for loop, which is number three uh, on that diagram. And this is the mostly used loop, and it is the easiest one to use. Right, I, I bring the flow chart here for loop. So what happens is, uh, first of all, you need to, to identify your starting point. When you, are, when you are working with for loops, you need to identify your starting point. That is uh, the start and your ending point. Then your start and ending point are recorded in what we call the counter. So what happens is, let's say I want to search through data. So I then make a condition to say that in this data, I want to search for values over 1 million, right? And maybe I know that the data I have, I have got maybe let's say 100 entries of data. And in that 100 entries of our data, I need to search anything, any figure that is above, uh, that is uh, greater than 1 million. So what you then do is on your counter, counter, it becomes a variable to you. So on your counter, you then state that my counter is going to be equal to one. But that is, when you say one, that is your starting point. As I indicate here, that is your starting point. Then you need to, specify a way to end because you have 100 entries you need to end at what at number 100 so it means that you are searching from the first entry to the last entry at 100 so then the loop how it works is as it goes to counter number one it starts at counter number one that is the condition you have to set the condition that if the condition is true that uh, the counter we are still at counter number one, then it's true. So you then execute the block. The block we are executing is the one which then have some structures which can search for any amount that is uh, more than 1 million. Then once it, let's say the first uh, point, it has got half a million that is 500,000. What happens is when you put a structure, usually we use if the last uh, lecture, we I show you how we use if selection structures. Use if to say that if whatever that is in a certain cell is greater than 1 million recorded. But here it is, it is less than 500, it means that it's jumped. Then we, it goes to next. Next, it means that it goes, it makes the counter increase from one to number two. Then still the condition is say that it is between one and 100 because when our counter is now at two, it's between one to 100. Then it's still true, then it executes. So it looks, it, the counter changes again, it goes there to number three, to number four, up to number 100. When it gets to 101, it becomes false because, because uh, the loop would have it reach its end point because our end point I state that it's 100. So by the time it gets to 101, it means that it's no longer fitting the condition that we have to start from one up to the end. That is 100. 
So it becomes false. So once it becomes false, it then stops the loop. It goes to the end and terminates the loop. That's how uh, these loops work. For loop, do while loop. Uh, so for loop, that's how it works. So mostly these loops work the same. They work the same thing. It means that we it, it has to count. It's repetitive. You can see that in this issue, it means it has to repeat 100 times going on the same uh, direction. That condition, it test condition, execute the block, then the next condition, block, then the next until it gets to the end. So that's for loop. But however, we have other types of loops. Uh, we are going to look at the do while loop. I hope you have seen the structure of this loop. You can see that for loop has got the next as it ends <coughs> after the block. Now let's look at the other type of the loop. That is do while loop. It works the same. So the do while loop tests a condition. As I say, the same conditions apply. It might be the same data that we need to use to say that I have data and I need to do something with that data. I need to search any figure above 100. So at first, it will start with the condition then as long as the condition based on the previous example i give as long as the condition is between 1 to 100 it means that it's true condition then there is a statement that execute mind with a dual while loop we do not have a next here but however dual while loop after that statement, you have to end with a statement called loop because you do not have next, which means that you are doing, you, it repeats itself. As long as the condition is true, it then loops and go <clears throat> and check the next condition from number one, number two, number three, up to the time it gets to the end at 100. Then as it gets to one zero, sorry, as it gets to one zero one, because the counter will be increasing. As it gets to 101, the condition will not then match that 101 is outside 1 and 100. So it becomes false, then the loops terminate. That's a dual loop. Then uh, we have another type of loop, um, do until loop. Now, do unto loop is quite different from for loop and do while loop because the do until loop test is a condition. It only executes a statement when the condition is false. Remember others, they were saying with the do while loop and for loop, the condition should be true. But here in this case, the condition should be false. So as for it to run, usually these are the situation where sometimes you mention, for example, let's say you want to mention that this loop stops until maybe uh, I am at number 100. You see, so it means that you don't need to specify from certain point to certain point. No, it means that you just mentioned that until it's equals to 100. So as long as you are, there is number one is execute. As long as it's 101 is execute. So it's only look at a condition where the, the variable of a counter has got a value of 100. So once it becomes true, because the condition becomes true when you meet the 100, then it terminates. That's do until loop. But 
in most cases, as I mentioned, the most commonly used loop is for loop. So now we just to go to our uh, questions. Uh, since what I say, what are they saying? Uh, they are based on the loops. Uh, I think they are the, the next one is going to be on, on Sunday. So we have to get to there. I'm going to start here. Uh, let me just, I hope everyone you have this document. Right. Oh, yes, the start. I just want to go to straight the procedure. 4.7, I think we have 4.6 before 4.7. Right, 4.5. Right, the 4.6. Oh, well, 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 where did I get wrong here? Right, the 4.6, it asks us to create a spreadsheet like this. Right. You can see activity 4.6. It says, Open a new workbook and populate VBA code to provide the following output in Fig 417. Uh, this is the Fig 417. Then all cells with red, all cells with number with numbers which are exactly divisible by seven should be shaded in red. You can use if statement to assist you with this. Do some research about the mode. This is an operator that we need to use uh, that can assist us. Then we have to save it as a macro enabled. So first of all, we need to open a spreadsheet. In this case, we are going to use for loop. We are going to use for loop. Right, so this is our spreadsheet. Then the next thing we need to create a macro, we go to developer tab, then macro. You can see that as a new spreadsheet, we don't have a macro. So after that, we then need to give a macro. Let's say this is activity 4.6. I use underscore because a dot operator cannot be allowed. Then I say create. Once it created, then gives us a procedure to create here. Right. So what we need to do is we need to create for loop to do this, but we need to use a counter variable uh, so that we can able to access, we can able to, to use it to do something. So first of all, we need to declare, we can say deem, I can call that variable counter is equal, sorry, S integer. Integer, right? Deem counter is integer, which means our variable counter is integer then now we can start for loop so we can say for counter our variable that we have created above we then is equals to because we are using a for loop is equals to one however if we have to check the spreadsheet uh, the sample spreadsheet that we're given here it means that you can see th th there is something that uh, is uniform. You can see that it counts from 1 to 100. So here it comes again, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, up until 100. So it means that there is a loop which is filling this side and the loop which is filling as we go through until this. So it's more like 10 times 10, 10 times 10. So we can use nested loop 
in this case. So for counter is equals to one to 10. Why I'm saying 10, we need a counter that counts from this point to this point, which is one to 10. Then we also need another loop, which counts from this point that is A up until J. So instead of saying one to 100, we can have, we can put our loops in two parts where we can say from one to 10 and also from A to J, from one to 10 and A to J, that in that way. So one to 10. Then the next thing we need to create an inner loop which means that we have a loop within a loop. That one we call it inner loop. So we then say for, I can use again a counter. In this case, I don't want to use counter. Let me just declare another variable, dim counter two is integer. So now I'm going to create another one for counter two. Then our counter two starts from one again to 10. Right. Then we need to look at what happens as it counts from one to 10. We need to fill this data with some numbers. So that means we need a variable that hold, that counts this kind of numbers. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll go here because we need to count from one to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it means that we cannot use the counter variable. We need a certain variable that counts everything to this. So in this case, we also going to say dim, dim, uh, sorry, this is the wrong spelling, dim. So in this case, variable S integer. These are whole numbers. Now, what we need to do is we need to fill up the cells. So we are going to say cells, uh, we need a row index. So our row index needs to be controlled with uh, the counter variable. That is a counter in this instance, needs to be controlled by a counter variable. That is counter, uh, counter one. Right, then, then the column index uh, the row index, yeah, it's gonna be the column index, we need to use counter two. So that is our cells. So we need to then say that as it goes there, dot value. The value we need there, we need to say is equals to our variable. So in this case, our variable should start with a value. So we can say variable is equals to one. So after this, we then say, uh, variable. So once it counts there, we can then say variable is equals to variable plus one. Then to end a for loop, we always say we use next. So we can say next, next uh, in this instance, we can say next uh, counter. So uh, let me correct the spelling. Next counter two, because that is the inner loop we have, counter two. You can see that this next is ending this loop. 
Then now we need to end this loop as well. So is the last to be ended, we can say next counter. So this is a procedure that fill up uh, this. So you can see that the variable would, variable will be increasing without stopping from one to two to three to four to five to six up until it's filled that way. Then we, after that, we need to allocate a button to this. So we go, we have to make sure that because here it ends with column J. So we have to ensure that uh, it's, outside here. So we say insert uh, column J it's here so I can put my button somewhere here. Uh, I then match it with this, then I say, okay, right. So after that, I then click aside, then I test, then it says, uh, well, type mismatch counter to Compile error. All right, let me just go to the function. Counter two is equals to counter two. Oh, yeah. With I wrongly type integer and say interior. That's why it says type mismatch. Type mismatch, it means that. The data that is assigned, you can see these are integers, but me, I say interior. So that's the reason why it's giving that error. We'll close. Okay, then uh, as I close, let me just save this workbook. Uh, let me say um, act four underscore six. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It is micro and eight bot save. Okay, let me just close this. It's always good things to do that. So as I click it, you can see now what you can see, it counts from one, two, three, four, five. It counts in different direction rather than say one, two, three, as it goes down like this. It counts by rows. But as we want to count, uh, let's see. It, here it's counting by columns. So the issue that we need to do is to go again to the same loop uh, here. I then say edit. So in this instance, that means we have to interchange our counter variables so that this becomes counter to uh, then this becomes counter one let me uh, sorry counter not counter one then after that we then save this okay i delete this data right you can see now that it comes the way that it's presented here from one to 10. So this is part of your assignment. So the correct way of doing the code is, uh, is uh, let me go to my procedure. It's here. So this is where I just change. But however, now we need to color the cells. Because they say any number divisible by seven should be colored like this number should be colored. This number should be uh, colored, so forth, so forth. I think uh, that's basic mathematics. So we can create a procedure, but I'm going to here. I just want to show you something for practice sake. We have to go here, then we say uh, macro. Uh, edit, because I just want to look at the colors. How do we assign the colors to this? Uh, 
right? So I want to create another procedure called um, sub color color index. In this instance, the color index are uh, something from one to 53. So it's eight by eight. So I'm going to, don't worry about this. I just want to show you something. Uh, I'm going to copy this code. I just use the same variable, but here I change it to eight. Yeah, I change to eight again because there are 56 colors that we can use. So in this case, instead of saying value, we can then say a color index, yeah, interior, interior. Dot color index. Those are color index. There are different colors that we might need to use. Right. In this case, then right. Let me just see if it's accepting this. Yeah, it accept it. Then and I just need to save this. This is not part of our, um, our assignment, but it's just to show you something that you might learn from this. Then I can't remember I, I'm doing this in sheet number two. Then I go here, I click, uh, uh, I think eight somewhere there. Then I use this button. I, I assign it to this. Then I do this. Then I say, wow. Uh, okay, out of range, it says variable out of range. Okay, it's fine. But however, uh, you can see from this point, this is your number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So it means that color index number one is black, color index number two, white, red, green, blue, yellow so in this case we want to use color index red which is color index number three if you want darker one this becomes number nine maybe let me just improve the code uh, so that it also deals with the numbers all right let me say value so that we put the color index together with value. Let me see here. Yeah. Let me put these values first. Then let me delete this so that it doesn't. Right, I'm going to close this package. Then I say, okay, right? In this case, I want to delete. So if I delete, you can see that I punch delete button, it doesn't delete. So what you just need to do is to come here, go to your shading, then you say no few. It then removes the colors here. Then I say, okay, all right, don't worry about the, this. Let me say end. So I have put numbers, as you can see, this number one is not visible because it's black. Number two, number three. So you can see that each is mentioned with its own color index. So if you want to use color index, this color, it means use number nine. If you want to use this color, number 30. So from the question, you can see this color index it looks like number three, like this, by comparison. Yeah looks like number three. This is just to, to, to show color index. So don't worry about it, about this code. So now you have your color index. Now I'm going back to here to our code because we want to do 
the color uh, to fill in the color index. Then the next thing is to open our procedure. Developer macro. Uh, then we go to edit. We no longer want this function because we have achieved what we wanted. So our next function maybe is to, to find divisible by seven. So I can say sub D V divisible by seven. Now, this is the next function. So what happens, we can use this function to do this at the same time with this, but however, I prefer doing it separately so that this will populate the other one colors. I just copy the code and paste it here. Then the next thing is to say, uh, this is, uh, our, um, our looping. Remember, these are a different procedure from this. Now, instead of using uh, this value, we are now going to say to use an if statement here. We are going to say if, right? So what is being counted in this point is variable. It's variable mode seven, right? Variable mode seven is equals to zero. Uh, I uh, syntax error, then what happens? We understand this if statement mode, it means if number is divisible by seven and is equals to zero, we need to color it. So we need now to bring this um, to this side. Right, I didn't just for neatness of the code. So instead of saying value here, we just going to use a interior dot color index. But we are not going to choose variable. We have to say three because we have find color index to be three there. Then this, you leave it like that, plus plus. Yeah, this variable is equals to variable plus one. So as it continues, it colors these cells. Next, uh, next counter after that. So you can see, we just change a little bit here. Of course, if you want, you can just take this code and put it here if you want it. If you don't want to create another sub procedure, it's another way of doing it. Now, let's, you only not taking this code, but you take these two like this, this if statement and this and put where I have pointed out, right? But here, this procedure, the if statement should end. So we have to say end if. Because if we don't end if, it will give us an error. So again, by just correcting, if you want to make it in one function, you copy this code and come put it here. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. I'm going to create a, the other one is populate. The other one is uh, divisible by seven. So I'm going to do this. Then this is our next button. So if I click it, you can see it comes as expected. 
any number divisible by seven is then colored. So as I was saying, the looping can make you able to find something uh, inside your spreadsheet. So this is going to be your uh, assignment number 4.6. Right, then we have dual loop, but I'm not going to uh, create code for it. As I show you the for loop, but you can use these examples as well to try and create your do loop since our time is not on the side because I want to rush to this point where we just need to see how we can do this. Right, then uh, bring it, it O, right? 4.7, right. Here's the 4.7, the activity. I think these are two activities which are due very soon. The 4.7 is saying, write a function that provides that exclusive amount. We must we will assume that this is calculated by taking the invoice price times 100 over 15, you call it function. You call it, you call this function a VAT exclusive. Test your function in the Excel sheet. You also need, you, okay, in the Excel sheet and also in your sub procedure the user must be requested to input so we need an input box to input uh, the uh, the figure that we need to use for but then we then do that as a, a function right so now we want to see how do we calculate the the sales co commission So we go again to this. Uh, the Excel sheet. So this one, I think it ends. We I have to close it so that we do not um, mix up. So you need to open again another Excel worksheet for functions for, for that activity specifically. So we are going to say, developer macro then uh, we are given the name here what's the name of the function uh, all right it's called this uh, right we can use it as how this so in this instance, we need to uh, create a function uh, for calculating that. So we are going to use uh, a sub procedure. So we are going to say um, in this sub procedure, we're going to say sub, not sub, we are going to say um, but exclusive so we then create so this is a our procedure but exclusive so in this instance what we just need to do is if you check from this example you can see that a sub procedure a function can be called in a sub procedure so in this case we just need to create a function so now we are going to create a, a, a function we are going to say function a calc that you can see that a this is a function. This is how we start with a function. There's difference between a sub procedure and a function. So now 
in our sub procedure, I think that's where we need to plan the input and output. But however, here we need a certain figure. So let's put a amount in this instance. So now the amount, it means that it's the amount that will come inside here is something that has been inputted from this point. So we want to do something with this amount. If you check from here, we are going to say the amount that we are going to enter in an input box is the one we are going to use there. So now we are going to say, once we receive the amount, we are going to say amount, because this amount includes VAT. So we can even include another to say DIM uh, total as integer. Let's say we are using integers. Then after that, we are going to say total is equal to amount. That is the amount that comes in. Uh, times times 100 over 115 because we have been given this formula here let me just uh, check where the question was saying that uh, that uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll be told that the invoice price. So in where I put amount, you can use it as invoice price. Remember the, the here I have to do something because this amount it's I did vice versa here because the amount is something that we need to input as well as re re return. Because if we check from this function, you can see that the sales is what was being, being evaluated to say that the sales gets to this point, to this point. So it means that in the end, we should that amount as a creative function. So in this case, instead of having total, we are going to say, say uh, dim total is, sorry, uh, let me just delete this whole thing. So we are going to say total, So we are going to say amount, sorry, not amount, but we are going to say total is equals to amount, right? Then after that, we then say amount is equals to total. Uh, times 100 divided by 115 because we put amount because we will receive this amount and put it there and then being converted to this then after that we get finished in the function then after that we come here and we then say sales is equals to input box, then input box, we then say enter Amount. 
then after that we then uh, uh, the cells after let's say you, after we input the cell we need to make a function call to this so that we can able to determine what's the uh, value of sales amount without VAT. So here it says enter, uh, let me just enter sales amount without, with VAT. This is sales amount with VAT. And then after that, we then now to, we then now need to make a function call of Hello. calc VAT. So after Hello. that, uh, sorry. Uh, there's Please somebody... double check the enter spelling. The enter? Spelling for enter. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, I was corrected. Yeah, this is uh, the spelling for enter. I just uh, enter a wrong spelling there. However, these ones, we can call them string. Let's say if you want to create your assignment, this is where you can even change the message and put a message that, uh, that suit your own, as well as these variables and these names of functions, names of variables. That's where you can able to change so that we can able to differentiate your assignment with others. So here, especially when you have an input box like this, you have to make sure that uh, you do that. Then after that, uh, we need a message box. So our message box, you say MSG box. We then say uh, amount. Uh, Sales that exclusive is, then I put this, uh, let me put a run sign. Then after that, I then close this, then I put concatenation. Then I want to make a function call here. Then I say calc, calc V18. Make sure that you do not make spelling mistakes. Then in this case, I then do this, I put cells. Then after that, I close, right? So this becomes a function, then I save. Then I have to save this to say activity four underscore seven, then macro enabled uh, save. Then after that, I need to put a button. This is button. Then the button should be linked to this. Then okay. All right. Then after that, it says enter sales amount. Let me say 115. Then okay. Then oh, it's not showing the value. Something might have wrong, gone wrong with this function. Then it says amount sales value is this. Talk about sales. Then let me just check one more time. Case is and function type of sales. Boom. Right, enter sales, here it is. Not very sure why is it not producing the value because this is the uh, more of the same thing uh, where we need to calculate uh, that. But in this instance, not very sure because it should able to assign this amount to this so that it puts a value that is calculated out of this as a total. Uh, let me see if I can say return amount expected. And 
start means they say expected and start means let me see not very sure where it says uh, expected all right what i'm going to do i'm going to post in the group what's uh i will debug this so that it gives us a correct figure there might be something that is underlying on this because of uh, the time i should have been beginning something else now so uh, expect a response just in uh, uh, after nine o'clock once I finish with another class that is coming in. But however, this is how we do it. Function, you create a function separate from this, then you create a procedure that can call a function. And that function would then uh, be used this. This is to make the code in a uh, simpler so that it can you can when you are correcting mistakes you can either correct here or you can either correct here rather than to say if all these things are in one procedure like this especially when the code becomes too long it it gives it becomes problematic to solve such issues uh i hope uh everyone uh, is okay with this then uh important announcement next week i'm going to convey a lecture uh, for this module uh, on wednesday on wednesday between 18 15 to 17 15 only for wednesday because uh mr kamanga uh, who's taking you for mark uh, you will be busy, will not be available to have a lecture on Wednesday. So we just interchange. So it's just only for next week that we'll do AIN 3701 on Wednesday. Only for next week. Then the other week, we revert back to Friday. So only next week, that's where we are doing a, a lecture for this. So expect uh, something at around nine o'clock because I'm about to start something at around quarter to eight. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, please post them in the group uh, because now I'm going to end this uh, lecture. Thank you. <laughs>